So how to have unshakable confidence when speaking to a group of people. The very first lesson I want to share with you is this. Write it down. All speaking is public speaking. All speaking is public speaking. The first thing you have to get out of your head is, oh, if I'm speaking to a group of people, five people, 10 people, I should be very different versus speaking to one-on-one. -on -one. Right. No. If speaking to one-on-one, -on -one, that is public speaking. Okay, you're speaking to a group of two, that is public speaking. You're speaking to a group of a hundred, a thousand, that is public speaking. It is the same. So in your mind, why you get nervous? Because in your mind, you have this kind of this idea of, oh, I speak a certain way if I'm one-on-one, -on -one, but the minute I'm stage, oh, I need to be like completely, totally different. That is simply not true. So all speaking is public speaking. So let's talk about secret number one. And that is this, speaker is made and is not born. Say with me, speaker is made and is not born. Because you may think, well, you know, Sifu, some people, they are naturally born, they, they have a lot of confidence and they're naturally charismatic and, and they're naturally very good on stage. There's yes. some people that you may perceive that that's who they are, that's what they're like. They are always this confident, right? I think when you met me, I'm fairly extroverted. Extroverted, yeah. But I remember with the first few times you put, I think about six months worth of the you first six months, stage. About the first six months. You know, see if we put me up on stage six times, maybe eight times, you know, once per month, every yeah. month. Yeah. And I was terrified each time. So, um, so, so this, it's very good one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. To him, that's no problem. You can do it all day. Like, that's no problem. But somehow when you're in front of people, yes. right? Because in your mind, you think that's different. Or I would get up there and I would ramble. Yes. I would pace. To, I did all the, <laughs> I, I try to tell bad jokes. Bad jokes, yes. I would, no one laughs. You know what? Yeah, How many of us told bad jokes and no one laughs on stage? Right? You thought it's funny, but no one thought it's funny. Yeah, yes. and I did all the classic mistakes. Yes. And then you showed me, you know, How you broke this. it down. That's right. Okay. So pay attention. He's going to show you just a fraction of those, and if you can apply and it, let me well. let, let, let's see if we prove that to you. Okay. So you see, Sifu presenting today, TEDx, right? Yeah. Speaking to thousands of people. Uh, Australia, we're going to November. StartCon. We're going to Australia StartCon. Four thousand entrepreneurs. Yes. Right. I'll be one of the keynote speakers alongside with some amazing, yes, amazing CEOs, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And right? it's being negotiated where you're one of the main panelists deciding the million dollar winner. As yeah. Well too. I'm, I'm going to be also investing some money, like taking on, like looking at what kind of like a. Chuck Tang type of kind of setup. Yes. People pitch us a deal and I'll see if I want to invest. So, let me prove to you. This is Sifu today, right? This is Sifu many, many years ago. So I want you to take a look at the picture. There was Sifu back in Toastmasters when I was probably, I don't know, 20 years old, 20 something years old. Many, many wow. years ago. So, so I want you to look at the picture and tell me about this man. Tell me about this young man. How would you see? Just describe. Glasses. Glasses. Studious. Studious. Nerd. Spiky hair. Nervous. That's right. You can tell. He's a little nervous. What Insecure, else? Insecure, yeah. Shy. You can, you can see like, you know, you can see the shy. Not confident, right? Not 100% confident. That's correct. He needs a makeover. Yes. Looks right? super young and Super young experience, right? Hesitant. The smile is more to cover up the, the nervousness, right? <laughs> Hasn't met Jenny yet. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So what I'm saying is this, you can see that's where Sifu came from. So I know for a fact, speaker is made, not born. So the speaker that you see today, the communicator that you see me today presenting and teaching to millions around the world, guess what? I learned how to do this. It is not natural. It is not natural born skill. Everything that I do, the skills that I have, I developed it, I honed the skill, and I learned it. I learned it one at a time. So don't be giving me an excuse, oh, Sifu, I'm not good looking, I'm not naturally charismatic, I'm not this, I, I speak with an accent, all this. I don't want to hear any of those excuses. None. Because if I could go from that, what you see, to this, at least you can improve, yes? That's where I came from. So from there, when I joined Toastmasters, then later on, now first you have to understand, when I joined Toastmasters, my goal was never to be a speaker. My goal was very simple. My goal was simply to improve my English. That was it. Because I was shy, I was nervous. 
And I thought maybe joining Toastmasters, in case you don't know what Toastmasters is, it's a nonprofit speaking kind of club, right? You go there and you would practice in front of people and people give you feedback. And I joined Toastmasters because I wanted to improve my English, reduce my accent just by a little bit. That was it. That was my goal, right? So after I joined Toastmasters, I was practicing and practicing and practicing, and I was showing up. What's the word? Showing up every single week. Every single week, I would do something. Every single week, I would I would present. I would do a speech. I would volunteer. I would do something. After about three to six months of that, now in Toastmasters, they always give you these little forms, kind of feedback form. After you do a speech, people could give you a little bit of feedback. Yes. Right. And they would say, so at first couple of months, they say, oh yeah, you know, you could you could improve on this, and maybe you should do this. You should you should speak a little bit louder, or you should speak a little slower. You can do whatever it is, right? They give you a feedback. After about I don't know five six months or so, people started giving me feedback. Listen to this. They would say, "Oh, great job!" The feedback got shorter and shorter. Outstanding. You are natural. Give me a break. There's nothing natural about what you see there, right? But this, you're natural. And I'm like, there's nothing natural about what I do at all. If anything, it's they're very unnatural, and I force it. I, I make it natural, right? And from there, people thought, oh, you know. Maybe you've got something. I remember there was、um, the president of the club back then, running Toastmasters.、Yes. He said to me that you know, Dan, you got there's something about you. You've got a he calls it an X factor.、Mm. There's something about you that on stage, it, even though your English is not the best and and your delivery is not the best, but there's something about the way you communicate that people resonates with you、right. somehow. Maybe because you're not so perfect. Maybe because you speak with an accent. I don't know. So, oh, that's that's interesting.、Mm-hmm. So then from there, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I was studying a lot of the great speakers like Tony Robbins and、yes. all, all, a lot of great people back then.、Um, Zig Ziglar, yes,、uh, the old days. So a lot of speakers, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if someday I could do that? That was it.、Mm-hmm. I had this thought: if someday I could. Be on stage, just just like them, and I could talk to people. I could I could inspire people. Like, wouldn't wouldn't that be awesome? That was just just kind of like a like you know when you were a kid, a dream, like a like like a, like a thought. Like, wouldn't it be nicey? Like,、yes. it's like I saw that car. Would it be nice without that car? Or、right. you you see something on a magazine? Wouldn't it be nice if I can go on there for vacation? And that was it, right? Because I was listening to these like motivational tapes. Yes. Cassette tapes, by the way. Yes. Right. Cassette tapes back then. I know. Yeah, like young young people. They're like, <laughs> they're see, see for what is cassette tape, man? Like, no, not CD. Before CD, like cassette tape. I had that thought. And because of as I was learning about you know different high income skills, and I was already very entrepreneurial.、Mm-hmm. So even though so a, a lot of entrepreneur activities I was doing, copywriting it was on computer. It was computer like hiding behind a computer. I didn't have to deal with people. Right. I didn't have to deal with people. But because I was so good at it, I was making very good living as a young guy. And people started asking me like, how how do you do what you do?、Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, what do you mean? Like you just do this. I show them on the computer. I do my kind of geeky kind of thing. I do my thing. I say, okay, here we go. Yeah. And they're like, "What did you do?" I, I like, can you show us more? I said, "What do you mean?" Like, okay, here we go. This is how you do it.、Like, SEO. Yeah, like you just do this stuff. Like、yeah. to me, because it's so second nature. They're like, no, no, no. Like, can you teach us?、Mm-hmm. I, I said, "What do you mean? Like, teach you? Can you can you do some kind of a, a workshop? Right. Like, speak to our people." Is that when you discovered you really enjoyed teaching? I actually, a good question. I enjoy teaching. I later discovered, but I actually enjoy teaching back when I was already in high school when I was learning martial art,、mm-hmm. and I was already teaching martial art、right. in high school because I got bullied, right? <clears throat> so from there, I already, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know what it was like. I didn't know it's called teaching.、Right. I just knew I like to share、right. what I do and what I know, and when I see people using.、Mm-hmm. And, and using what I teach and, and it's impacting their lives, I, I get a kick. I get, I get a kick out of it, right?、I've, I remember a phrase once: "Learn, do, teach." That's right. And then I also remember you telling the story. There's a video, a YouTube video of you、That's、where、right. you talk about when、that's、you're、right. at school, you got bullied. Then when you did martial arts, you used to have like all the other kids come out. Yes. You, so that's when it started, really. That's when I started. Wow. Okay.、Yeah. So it was back in high school, in cafeteria. 
that I would just in lunchtime I would teach martial arts. Is it a way for you to better your skill when you you know you learn you do it and of course naturally if you have to teach I, it, I, it, I, it is. But back then I didn't think about that. Got it's it. just something that I do. It's just like oh you asked me I didn't charge anything. Right. He asked me oh, what 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 would you I said just just do this and I was just thought you asked me and then I, I share with you. I guess the problem with a lot of people that do learn to teach is they don't even do it properly. They they're trying to fuck, teach it. it so up. now they're teaching the shit to other people. That's right. right. Okay. That's right. So so from there, that's how we're teaching at like this Toastmasters back then. You can see me in the middle, right? Um, that was my father's jacket, right? <laughs> right? Back in Toastmasters, right? Uh, yeah, like that's me in the middle. You can see right there. Now at the time, what's very interesting is we had a lot of people who would go through Toastmasters that would they would come to the club, mm -hmm. right? And you would hear stories like, "Wow, you know, um, wouldn't it be great if they could be a uh, like I, I'd be a professional speaker?" Mm -hmm. Including at the time, the president who told me I've got an X Factor, he wanted to be a professional speaker, right? Now, but guess what? Over the years, as far as I know, as far as I know, because I still know, as far as I know, guess how many people eventually went on and become a professional speaker. Only you. Yeah, that's right. Zero, except me. Zero. None. Why? Why? Nobody implements, Adam says. Nobody implements, yes. You kept at it, commitment, consistent commitment, practice. Commitment, consistency, yes. yes. No drive. It's a nice idea to have, but you know, they're not that serious. Many, 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 many reasons, right? So then I was speaking as a young guy, right? You know, speaking at, you know, business type setting. I was speaking to people, small group at first, you know, you can see three people, five people, 10 people, 20 people, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a, like it wasn't a big crowd. I think this, I was speaking at a local cash flow club mm -hmm. at the time. Oh yeah, you can see the cash flow. Yeah, cash flow club, table. right? It's small like in a community center, small group of people. I was 20 somewhat years old, right? I was already, I think at this one, I was 23, four, maybe something like that. You had a probably yes. a more better, a better suit, I think, already by then. A little right, bit. right. So at, at the time, so just think about that. That's how CV got started. From there, then to uh, later on, more and more time, more practice to this, to being the opening speaker for TEDx, not once, twice. This is TEDx Stanley Park. I believe I was speaking to 2,600 people in Vancouver, being the opening speaker in my red suit from the shy, <laughs> nervous, uncertain, like kind of young guy to being the opening speaker for TEDx Stanley Park. A speaker is made, it's not born. I made myself a great presenter and speaker. It took many years, many, many years. And over the years, I've learned a lot of lessons. I'm gonna teach some of the most important lessons that I've learned, but I want you to know, doesn't matter if you're speaking with an accent, doesn't matter if you're not tall enough, doesn't matter if you're not articulate enough, doesn't matter if you lack confidence, doesn't matter if you get nervous, none of this shit matters. With practice, with the right training and coaching, you could get, now are you gonna get to this level? Maybe, maybe not, Yeah. but at least you could get better, yes? You get just a little bit better.